Hello, my name is Anthony, and today I'm going to be teaching you about cold saws using the Duringer D300. This versatile saw can be used with particularly any steel, stainless, or aluminum metal part, including tubes, pipes, angles, and flat bars. It provides a high quality cut and accuracy. It doesn't require much manual force when cutting, and there isn't much mess to clean when you are done. Put that all together, and it's not hard to see why this is one of the most popular tools in our shop. To get started, let's answer the most obvious question. Why is it called a cold saw? The reason is simple. It's called a cold saw because it's designed to keep the blade and the material cold, which also eliminates flying sparks and loud noises, unlike other chop saws. It does this a few ways. The one you'll notice first is that it spins at a much slower speed than other saws. This reduces the heat caused by friction. The second way is with a fluid cooling system. Not all saws have this, but the Duringer D300 and D350 models do. It pours a constant stream of liquid on the material while cutting. This provides cooling and lubrication that reduces friction as well. Lastly, cold saws use a circular tooth blade. The design of the blade allows heat to be transferred from the material into the chips created by the cut. Let's talk about safety. Cold saws are in a shop environment where a hard hat, hearing protection, safety glasses, and steel-toed shoes are required. Additionally, always wear gloves when handling material, since there may be burrs, which are sharp. Gloves should be tight-fitting when working with a cold saw to prevent them from getting caught and pulled into the blade. Perform a visual inspection of the machine. Check that the immediate area is clean and that the work area is free of metal debris and shavings. Apart from being sharp, metal debris will clog the saw swivel joint and make it difficult to move. If this happens, do not attempt to force it as this could result in muscular strain. Contact maintenance so that they can clean it out. Next, check that the saw guard and the guard pin are engaged. Visually inspect the blade for damage. Never use a blade that is cracked or missing teeth. Also, it is very important if you notice that the machine is vibrating or jumping up and down when cutting, stop immediately and inspect the blade for missing teeth or cracks. If the blade looks good and is still causing these conditions, then please call for a safety rep or supervisor to assist. If a damaged blade is used, it will most likely break during cutting, which could cause severe injury. If the guard mechanism is missing, not functional or damaged, lock out the machine and report it to maintenance. Now, we need to make sure the saw has adequate fluid. To do this, check the coolant reservoir located at the bottom of the saw. If the coolant level is close to or below the low line, you'll need to add more or call channel 2 on your radio and request maintenance and see if they can help. The correct mixture of coolant fluid is 6 parts water to 1 part coolant. Pour this mixture into the top of the saw reservoir until it is near the full line. Once you fill the reservoir or verify that the reservoir has enough fluid, turn on the saw and watch for fluid to run across the face of the blade. Using the fluid control valve, you can adjust the fluid output to a desired level. Keep in mind, not enough fluid and the blade will get hot and break. Too much fluid and you'll get splashback and create a mess. The ideal amount of fluid should be just enough so that the fluid covers the face of the blade. Now that the saw is ready, you can prepare your material. For demonstration, we'll be using this mild steel square tube. First, place the tube in the vise clamp. You'll notice that there are two vise handles. Use the crank handle to snug the material tight. Once you've aligned the cut location under the saw blade, use the lever handle to fully secure the material. Never tighten the material with the crank handle. It will damage the vise over time. When cutting angle iron, as much as it does appear to make sense, and help the blade cut better, do not clamp the angle iron in the vise positioned up like a pyramid because it can pop out of the vise and cause injury and or damage the machine. Instead, you'll place a piece of square tubing against the inside of the angle and use the vise to hold the square tubing against the angle for proper support and precision cutting. This will ensure that the angle is secure when being cut. Flat stock should always be cut in a vertical position and not flat. Always use a pipe stand to support material that comes out past the base of the saw. This support removes potential energy from the material, which reduces burrs and prevents the cut pieces from falling. Now, you'll need to adjust the saw speed using the motor speed control switch. The cold saw has two speeds, a high speed of 54 RPM and a low speed of 27 RPM. The high speed should be used for mild steel and the low speed should be used for stainless steel. Now, turn on the saw and let it rotate for about 5 to 10 seconds. Use this time to adjust cutting fluid to the desired level. Remember, always keep your hands away from the blade while it's in motion. When you're ready, gently apply downward pressure to the saw handle until the blade contacts the material. 
Do not forcibly pull down on the handle, as this will wear the blade out and could cause it to break. Once the cut is complete, turn off the saw and wait for the blade to come to a complete stop. Now, retrieve your material and take it to the deburring station to remove sharp edges. Make sure to wear your cut resistant gloves. As freshly cut metal will be sharp, the edges will have burrs. We also recommend placing a rag at the end of the material to keep residual cutting fluid from leaking onto the ground. In addition to straight cuts, the cold saw can also be used to cut at an angle. To adjust the angle, disengage the blade rotation knob located on the right hand side of the cold saw. Pull the saw down and swivel it to the angle desired. To go over how this works, I'll adjust the saw to a 30 degree angle for our next cuts. Once adjusted, I'll clamp the material the same as before, turn on the saw, check the coolant flow rate, and make my cut. And that's what you need to know to safely operate a cold saw. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.